So it started in September and we thought originally that it would be an in-person, hands-on, um, hectic studio days um, and all 15 people would be in, um, in our studios. We had to kind of take all of that away and just um, do everything through Zoom. I was one of the first people to interview someone out of my, my whole cohort, so it was quite a nerve-wracking and exciting experience. For shorter form, I interviewed someone called Laura Ashcroft. Whenever you feel down, look up, and, and every time that I do look up, I see, I see the buildings around me, I see the sky, then it, then it makes me realise that my, my issues aren't actually as big. They're, they're only a very, very small um, dot in the ocean. Laura is just such an amazing person, so full of life, so positive, and very eccentric in an amazing way. In the first shorter form, um, how it would work is we would take some days in the studio where Bina, Esther and the crew would be teaching the young people how to conduct interviews in front of the camera. You're going to be recorded, so uh, I think Saoirse or Elaine are going to be controlling the, the remote, so they record just your screen. Uh, working on Zoom has helped me quite a bit because I have autism and anxiety is a major component with that. So meeting new people in environments is very difficult, so having my own room and having my own setup allows me to interact and not be interactive with them as well. Can you see that? Yeah, the back page is a bit fuzzy. I'll do, I'll do it again. The guy I interviewed, his name was Tom Burke. Uh, he's a property developer from Ireland. He came over in the late 70s. I knew him through working with my dad, who's also a builder. People would be sitting up on the back of the wagon on, on these little huts. I mean, where would you see that now? You wouldn't see people going to work in, in those conditions. People would think it's barbaric if you went doing that now, but that was, that was in the 70s. You know, that's, that's completely gone. And then working with experienced TV directors, and post-production specialists to transform those interviews into concise three-minute pieces. A lot of the storytelling process was, was the same, so they're still getting a load of editorial, a load of pre-production and all of that um, really integral learning. Um, but the filming was obviously through Zoom, so it was a bit less technical. So what we did at the end of that was we invited them to the studio so that they could interview each other to still get that hands-on experience, but it was just reducing the risk where we could. It was very formal, kind of the same sort of setup like this, um, with a whole crew and cameras and microphones and various directors on Zoom and my group also um, channeled in through the ether, also on Zoom. Um, sort of cheering me on and helping me with uh, my interview questions. I chose to do my interview on um, South, the South Asian underground music scene. My name's Nirav. Uh, my last name's Chande, which is also what I DJ as. My involvement with the Manchester music scene and how it's informed my identity as a South Asian is in, tied into my involvement with club spaces, with nightlife, and with spaces that kind of teach you to be yourself. All of the young people would find um, a story and bring um, that person from their community in for an interview. The work of a pastor is a, of, of a pastor, it involves love, that pastoral care, showing concern, showing empathy. If somebody's in need, they need help, help them. If they got no money for the food, or I've told my staff and my son, money comes and goes. I'm not really what you expect. When you probably look at me, you may expect me to just be a rapper or portray an image of being hard. My name's Esther, and I interviewed Mr. Jeremy Michelson. There's, a, there's an infrastructure of, of uh, a Jewish life in Manchester, un unlike any other regional city, uh, you know, outside of uh, Greater London itself. 
So my interest to interview Jeremy was because I'm proud modern Orthodox Jewish girl, so I wanted to explain and expand Judaism as a religion to everybody on the shorter form group. We recruit from all across Greater Manchester um, for 18 to 30 year olds who are not in employment, maybe hasn't had that experience before to get kind of real industry standard training. Um, I'm Sophie, um, my pronouns are she slash her. I interviewed Dave Haslam. You know, where, where is the rule book that says you can't be into electronic music and Sylvia Plath? You know, or you can't be, you know, what, who says that? The only person who, who says that is yourself. You know, you're the only person who limits yourself. And he's just, all, he's got, he knows all of these prolific Manchester people, but yet he's, he's not one of them. He's sort of more behind the scenes. He's more of a journalist. Um, he's more trying to get to the bottom and get, get to the truth of all of these people. So I found that really interesting. Hi, I'm Joss. I'm from Wigan Greater Manchester. My guest was Mary Lyon. There are so many women out there that still don't know that they've been affected. I've even been contacted late last year by a lady who said, you know, I've struggled with this for over 45 years thinking I'd done something wrong. Mary is in a place where she really wants to tell her story and I thought this would be a perfect platform for me to do so. My name is Abu Bakr Ishtiak. I'm 31 years old. During the process, I interviewed Dave Steele and he's got the same condition as me, uh, RP, called retinitis pigmentosa. And I've got Moonbeam syndrome with uh, tunnel vision, where he's only got RP with tunnel vision. And it was intriguing to find out when he did poetry as well, and how a blind poet can write and read. I want to read you a piece of poetry now called Blind Perceptions. I know there's strength inside of you, though all you feel is numb. Don't be afraid as eyesight fades for what is still to come. You will adjust. In these words, trust. We share these tunneled eyes, a mix of strength and anxiousness. The same in me applies. Hello, I am Charlotte. My interview subject is Taryn Knight. Remember the importance of being a creative. Because what would life be with no music, no art, no film, no theatre, no poetry? So remember you're important, you matter, and we'll get through it. In a time such as this, it's even more difficult as a creative. And I just wanted to share that story with you, as it is the story of many self-employed creatives right now. You know, young people particularly um, were hit very hard by um, unemployment and lack of opportunities and, you know, as was everybody throughout the, the whole pandemic. So we thought it was really important to still keep engagement and keep kind of positive development um, happening throughout if we could safely. So I'm Adam. Well, a saving grace for me during quarantine has been tabletop gaming and one of the uh, titans of the field is Fanboy 3. To talk to the main man himself about it, it was sort of a blessing. If you're in a shop and someone comes in and they're looking really hassled and, you know, and they're upset about something, you can say, is everything okay? And sometimes people, sometimes it's not, and they just want to talk to another human being about it. Well, we call it roll through it. You just have to turn up and we'll just play some light games. And if you want to talk, talk and if you don't want to talk you could just be in a space with other people um the most valuable outcome i've received from shorter form i believe would be confidence as um, especially because i don't i don't think i would have ever interviewed someone ever or like even being on camera speaking now it's quite a big step my golden moment of shorter form was working on the interviews with alex t and alex p it's really interesting to like make friends and like relationships with people like who I've only just met today, but I still feel like close to those people. I think I've grown from doing short form in so many ways on more of a level of just socializing with people that are creative within the same area as me. The advice that I would give for future shorter form participants would be just to be yourself and don't compare yourself to other people. Everyone comes from a different backgrounds, different creative backgrounds, and everybody is here to get as much 
as they can out of the experience and to help each other along the way.